having a technical background or having technical knowledge, do you think that it can help um, make the creative process burgeon and grow, or do you think it can hinder the creative process? It can go both ways, um, but I've definitely found myself early in my career kind of uh, noticing that, yeah, I, I've started thinking about how to actually implement uh, an, a design, and that sometimes hindered my design process because I was thinking so much of how to actually make the solution happen. That's quite a challenging thing. So how did you manage to break through so it's not stopping you but maybe enhancing the stuff that you actually do? I think one of the things that I always struggled with is that uh, from a visual standpoint, like I'm not a super talented visual designer. I've seen some amazing visual designers that I'm just like, oh my goodness, like that is really, really slick and I love that and um, that's not like my strength. And so I was a, a lot came back more from like the coding perspective, being able to actually implement some stuff in code, which they couldn't. Um, but you know, there, there was this kind of this deciding factor of realizing, Am I more of a designer or more of a, a developer? Like, you know, I'm not necessarily that great at the graphics, but there's still so many other ways of design that can kind of spread in. Uh, so really like doing some research and finding about more about UX design and realizing that is really kind of what, what I wanted to focus on yeah. um, is kind of what led me to that. So it's, it definitely was this, this kind of process of navigating through it. It's like, where do I fit? Am I a designer? Am I a developer? Where, you know, I, from the first projects that I started doing, um, you know, a lot of the time I did a lot of websites. And when people come to you, they go, hey, we need a website built. They don't necessarily <laughs> say, hey, we need a front end developer to come, <laughs> come, come do this, especially if you're working with uh, smaller businesses and clients. So you do take on the designer and developer hat um, to kind of make that happen. A lot of developers are very afraid to learn about design. It's like, because I get question, question like, if, if I was to, to write an article, the perfect article for the developers would be how to, be, how to learn to design, or how do you, you know, which makes no sense to me, because learning to design doesn't really mean anything. It's just like, what, what part of design, you know, what discipline of right. design? Um, but there's still that question of, okay, what is the first step that someone who wants to really, as someone who's gone through this process yourself, what was your first step to say, okay, that's it, I'm becoming a designer? Right. I think, you know, following a lot of design patterns, at that time I didn't really understand that they were called design patterns, right? You kind of, you implement them um, in the sites doing a lot of web work. You yeah. kind of take on, okay, the navigation uh, menu, where does that live? And you're following a lot of the patterns that have already been created, and so you kind of learn to explore through that and then, you know, testing out the site and realizing, oh, this doesn't feel right, like something's off, let's, let's work on how to make this better. Um, but I think one of the, the great things that can really help a designer or developers wanting to go into design is looking at a lot of like the material spec guidelines are actually really, really helpful because not only does it actually tell you, hey, here's some guidelines of what to follow, but it actually does a really go a good job of explaining why you're doing that certain and the rationale thing. And logic. And, yeah, exactly. So that actually is really helpful because then you're able to understand why was this created? Like what was the thought process behind um, adding potentially a, a bottom navigation, or why would you have a side uh, side nav? You know, it's it's really getting to kind of explaining that, so you're able to learn from learn from actually interacting with something and seeing how they're doing it, but also getting finding out why they decided to do that. Because I think so much of design is so much it's problem solving, right? Yeah. So. Um, so many people forget that when they think of design, they think of the finished product, but there's so many different stages of how you got to that finished product. Um, and so a lot of it, being able to understand how someone was thinking through that really, really helps you um, from a development perspective, get into that design field of understanding, oh, okay, how do I get from thinking of how do I develop this versus how do I even arrive to the solution? I think that's the that's kind of the big difference there. As developers, you know, you have something that's already uh, designed for you for the most part. I mean, some people get handed things. Some people get handed an iOS mock uh, and said, hey, make this, make this into Android. So then at that time, you kind of become an Android uh, designer yeah. in that aspect. What do you think is like the biggest thing that stops developers really understanding design? One of the things that we do at uh, Google is we do design sprints. So the design sprints are really great because it brings people from all the different disciplines and specialties together um, to work into solving a, a challenge that we have. You know, so you have product managers, engineers, designers, researchers, everyone um, in, in the room together and kind of thinking and working through a problem, which is really fantastic because you get all these different ideas. 
Um, and one of the things that I really notice is we're, as we're bringing in designers you know, and uh, engineers and all these people together, is that when we're walking through the challenge, the engineers are already thinking of the solution yeah. and already thinking about how to implement it. They go straight to that, which makes sense. That, that is their role, right? As engineers, um, usually you are given something and you have to go, oh, how do I, how do I make this happen? How to, like, I'm thinking through problem solving, how to actually get to that solution. Whereas designers, we don't know what the solution necessarily is. So I think a lot of the blockers is automatically wanting to know the answer yeah. instead of being more aware and being okay with saying, you know, I don't know the answer to that, but let's, let's explore it together. Yeah. Um, so I think that's the biggest hindrance that can really stop developers into getting into design is wanting to have all the answers. It's, it's okay not to have them. I mean, and what do you think developers can actually do um, to get past that? I mean, because I find, like, for me, it's always sketching and just experimenting. Right. So I suppose it's how does the developer maintain that kind of playful space where they're not thinking, right, uh, here's the library we're going to use to do, like, a whatever widget or a fab or whatever, but what can they actually do that allows them to to not thinking about like the end result or breaking from that cycle. Yeah, you actually bring up a great point with sketching. That's probably one of my favorite exercises when I'm working with different people to get them thinking of, uh, of solutions. So it's particularly if you're developing an app or so is, hey, let's get some sketches out there, get a Sharpie and just start sketching out through some ideas. Um, because that really, that doesn't, you can really get some ideas on paper and not be uh, married to them, you know, and not feel like really connected because you spent all this time developing the solution and realizing, oh, it doesn't really work. Um, and so if you start really low fidelity with some sketches, that can really open up your mind in terms of thinking about different solutions because as you're sketching through it, you're realizing, oh, like maybe I want to use this fab button or something or everyone loves fab, right? So <laughs> you want to incorporate it somewhere and then you realize, hmm, maybe that's not the, the right thing to do and I haven't spent all this energy developing or even designing this. So then I can kind of toss that and move on and create a different solution. So sketching, I think, is a great uh, resource instead of people go straight. A lot of people like to prototype in the code. Um, but I usually like to challenge people and go, hey, start sketching some ideas. And then once you've landed on something that you think you, you want to explore some more, then dive into code or dive into sketch or whatever you're, you're using. So I suppose um, for the engineer to really understand design is almost like, okay, just start sketching first um, and start thinking about the thing you're going to build and the possibilities rather than straight to the end solution. One of the things I really noticed there was the way really good designers responded to constraints, you know. Uh, you think about, I don't know, like black and white photography yeah. or geotone prints, whatever. They're responses to you know, restrictions on the medium.